Hello everyone, thank you all for joining me today. I'm Judy Piper, I'm one of the engineering leads at C-Labs and also the host for this Celo Tech Talk series. Celo is a mobile-first blockchain, full-stack blockchain platform with the mission to build a financial system that creates the conditions of a prosperity for everyone. We recognize this is an ambitious mission and we are building Celo with the community members such as Valora end users, DAFs developers, validators, alliances, and community members. For this reason, we started the Cello Tech Talks back in April last year as one of Cello Foundation's effort to share and spread Cello technology knowledge with growing community. Last month, um, as part of Women's History Month special events, I had the great pleasure talking with the four fantastic Valora experts at C-Labs who are leading Valora app development and Cello user adoption followed by developer experience experts talking about how the team at C-Labs empower and support the Celo developer community building on Celo. The fun continues this month. Um, I'm making the April as a, a new Women's History Month. So I'm very excited to have five amazing women leaders at C-Labs um, who have been building, growing, and nurturing the Celo ecosystem and community, shaping Celo as we know today. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hello. Oh. Um, before we start um, the panel discussion and q and A's, I'd like to ask each panelist uh, to introduce yourself, including how you got to work on Celo and your current role at C-Labs. Um, maybe I will go count clockwise. Um, Anka. Thank you so much for uh, for having us, Judy. Um, and I love your tie. I've told you this before. Um, so I've been with C Labs for over two and a half years now. Uh, it'll soon be three years. It doesn't seem that long. Um, before uh, joining the team, I was working at the World Bank on digital finance and financial inclusion. And the way that I actually got introduced to the team is a story of women power and connection uh, because I got introduced through Anna, one of the first engineer working on Cello who used to be an intern at the World Bank. Um, and so it's, it's definitely because of another amazing woman that I got to be part of the team. Adriana. Sure. Um, thanks, Anka. And um, also, it's so great to be here with everyone um, to share about Solo Community. So I'm Adriana, and I foster Solo Community. And the way that I came to learn about Solo was actually through the Prosper Retreat, which some of the wonderful women here um, actually were spearheading um, prior to me coming on board. So my background, um, in addition to community management, is also in yoga and sound healing and it was through that avenue that i was invited to the prosper retreat which is a retreat pre-covid that we brought people together across the world developers designers dreamers and doers who cared about Celo's mission in a retreat like uh format in person um, so they could connect around different ways to bring that mission to life. Um, so it was there that I learned about the Cello community and the mission and then I never left. I stayed and came on board to support community and it's a really great place to bring all of my passions to life with a group of amazing people um, that share my same vision for the world. So I'm really grateful to be here. And before we move to um, Sochi, do you mind talking a little bit about Koneko event that's going to happen next week? Yeah, of course. Um, so Koneko means togetherness in Esperanto. Um, and so Cello means purpose in Esperanto. So we use that language um, in, as a theme around uh, our presentation to the world and the community. Um, and so after uh, Prosper, we were planning on doing another in-person event, but then of course um, COVID happened. And so instead of doing something in person, we thought, why don't we have some sort of community event that um, is virtual that anyone can attend to celebrate solo community, um, as well as just share the different projects in the ecosystem that are happening for everyone to learn about. And so that's where Kineco was born. Um, and next week on the 21st and 22nd, we will have, um, I believe it's our third Kineco. We've been doing them quarterly, and this will be our biggest one yet because we're celebrating the solo 
Cello main net one year anniversary. So it's basically a Cello birthday as well as Earth Day. Um, so I invite everyone um, to come and join. We're going to have two half days of awesome content um, around the world. So I would love to see everyone there. Please sign up. Yeah, and I'll share um, the link. Yeah. So, Chi. Yes. Can you hear me? Yep. Great. Hey, everyone. My name is Sochi Cazador. Um, just a little pro tip for folks. Um, just ignore the spelling and think of the Olympics is what I like to tell people in terms of um, uh, how to pronounce my name. Um, I lead builder growth at Cello, um, and a lot of the efforts uh, really are focused on projects like Cello Camp um, and the grant program. My background is in technology. Um, I was an executive at Fortune 500 company, but my family is also from a very small town in Mexico, a population of, uh, of 100, and was always drawn to this intersection of technology and impact, um, and discovered Cello um, and really you know, I think one of the things that spoke to me the most was this ability to democratize wealth and democratize technology. Um, and so it's great to be here with all of you. Vanessa? Mm, couldn't hear you. Okay, maybe we'll come come back to you. Uh, maybe Larisha, can can you go? Yes. Hi, my name is Larisha, and I have been working at C Lab since November, and I work on all of our social media platforms. So I love interacting with the community, seeing your tweets, hearting them, responding to Reddit comments. And I first learned about Cello through a LinkedIn profile. And I come from the Ethereum community. Prior to this, I was doing social media for some Ethereum projects. And I was just so excited to finally see something that could create DeFi for all. Because I, you know, DeFi summer happened last year and so much was happening. But I was like, not a lot of people can actually access this. So seeing how Cello provides this solution opportunity is what brought me into the space. Okay, I think I solved it. <laughs> yes. Okay, the mute button wouldn't toggle. Okay, um, great. My name is Vanessa Slavich. I've been working on Cello for just about three years. I was like the fifth person to join the team. And um, I love startups. I worked at Square before uh, for about six years. And most of my career has been at the intersection of um, FinTech, but more for accessibility perspective and then also social impact. Um, so right before, Cello, I was working at the UN at an innovation center focused on data and open source data. Um, and so over the last three years, have had the pleasure of focusing on a lot of different things and kind of building a lot of functions from the ground up. Um, but something that's very near and dear to my heart is the community and how people come together and gather and setting the container and kind of the environments and the places um, that people come and make Cello their own. Thank you, everyone. Um, that was a lovely introduction. And so maybe we can move on to uh, the questions I prepared. And I will stop time to time um, to ask audience to um, post your questions to these wonderful ladies. Um, so far, no questions. So I'm going to start with the questions I have. Um, what does a community mean to Sello? Who wants to go? Maybe I can ask uh, Vanessa since you're already on. Sure. Uh, so in crypto, I think most, I'm assuming most people on the call are familiar somewhat with crypto, but in crypto, the community is the heart and soul of a project. So Celo itself is an open source technology and the community around Celo is the thing that makes it real and makes it stand up and makes it live and votes and participates. And so in a traditional organization, community might be support and kind of the people that are using the product um, where Cello doesn't exist without the community. Um, and we've done a lot of different activities over the years around like personas and types and people. And it's always kind of changing. And I think Cello is just it's like the forest behind me, <laughs> which people are commenting on. But it's this living, breathing organism that is literally always changing. Um, and so our community will always be changing and growing 
Um, but something that makes Sela's community different than some of the other crypto projects is our focus on international and kind of different markets where a stable coin can actually be super useful um, versus I'm in the US. And so, uh, yes, Sela dollars are useful and I want to, but if I'm in South America where inflation is going up and down and you need a stable coin um, in a very different way. And because of that, like Sela from the very beginning has been focused or the Sela community has been very focused on in market um, activation. And so a lot of our community members are around the world and that's been um, a priority for every single project and every single program that we've launched. Um, so as you can talk a little bit about Solo Camp, but a lot of our entrepreneurs and founders are all around the world and that's by design, not by default. Hmm. Um, maybe then for the ecosystem, um, can I ask you the same question to you, Sochi? What does the ecosystem mean to you? And I mean to Solo. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I think very much like Vanessa's answer, you know, the the ecosystem is is vital to Cello, right? We think of this constellation of um, of really different applications that are part of the ecosystem. Um, it could mean applications that are focused on things like identity or payments. Um, uh, in addition to that, you know, we have. Um, we have a, a big entrepreneurial network that we work with. Um, Vanessa talked about Cello Camp. Um, and I think what's really unique here is our opportunity to kind of connect some of these people to some of the access that we take for granted um, in, um, in the Western world, specifically like areas like Silicon Valley. Um, and so I think that um, this ecosystem is really made up of like builders, of, of, um, of dApps, of core contributors really that are um, that are working together um, to really uh, make this cello platform really thriving and achieving its mission of, um, of, of creating more prosperity in the world. Um, and Anka and Adriana, Lorisha, do you wanna add to, you know, the meanings of the uh, cello community and what the uh, thriving cello community looks to you and uh, what makes a, a cello community successful? I can jump in just to add, I really love, I love speaking in metaphors and everyone here probably has noticed that by now that work with me, but we've already mentioned, um, you know, Vanessa's shared like the forest behind her, right? We really do look to nature as a guiding model of what healthy community looks like. Um, and I would say successful solo community is where there is no central um, group or org that's shepherding the community along. It's just naturally growing, just like the different trees in a forest. Um, and I feel like what our role is right now, the folks that are on the team and um, currently at C-Labs is to kind of create that mycelial network upon which all these uh, flowers and plants and trees can just grow organically. So for me, um, decentralization and, you know, going back to our also our values of unique purpose and connectedness um, as the cello values, those are really at the key, at the heart of, of what makes cello community cello and what we see as successful. Um, so if, you know, years from now, you know, we're all equal parts of the community um, growing and learning together um, and with equal distribution of power, that's really what it's all about. And that's what we're trying to seed. So um, like the programs that were just mentioned, like with Solo Camp, bringing in new projects um, and communities to work together uh, is really the way to make that happen. It's mm -hmm. all through relationship. And Anka, um, working in a public sector, you're, you're experts in, in that area. Um, what does the growing the ecosystem in the public sector with the seller community um, that looks to you and how you how you are working with the, um, those uh, community? Thank you, Judy. I um, wanted to maybe say a few words about community in general because I think it's really important to say um, and just building off of what Adriana said. Um, there isn't a central point to the solo community, or right? I think the, the flow of information and of knowledge flows both ways. And, and Vanessa will remember this, that the first um, research trip that was, was taken very much to Kenya uh, with um, some of the very early team members informed so much of then mm -hmm. the design and the decisions that were made um, on how to shape 
the platform, what features to build into the wallet. And I think that's sort of the, the perfect example very early on um, of, of what Adriana was describing in a constant flow of, of information, of knowledge, and of learning so much from, from people. Um, I think similarly, a, par a big part of the ecosystem is not only um, supporting the entrepreneurs who come through Cello Camp, but learning so much from their perspective, what their community needs and what they're looking to build and how this benefits others. And, and um, again, it goes back to this very um, um, organic vision of, of community and thriving. And to respond to your question, um, I know that a lot of people in crypto do not think of the public sector and the government more than an annoyance that tries to regulate them. Um, and they're maybe trying to evade. Um, and coming from the perspective of the public sector where I've spent the majority of my career, um, the way that I would say it is I, you know, I came on the blockchain and more specifically on the solo train because I really believed that the way the project was, was imagined could make a significant difference when it came to financial inclusion, which was something that I was working on by precisely eliminating some of the obstacles to access to financial services and products that we were seeing. And I don't mean only in emerging markets, I mean in places like the US, right, where we see data pointing that 10% of households don't have access to a debit card. Um, and so to me, bringing the public sector into the ecosystem is really pointing, as a lot about education, and is pointing out to them what are the obstacles and the frictions that they face in achieving their mission, um, whether it's organizations like the World Food Program, uh, the World Bank, UNICEF, or others, where blockchain technology can help. And, and being able to make that connection um, is, is really where you start seeing a lot of engagement and people come on board because it's it's a solution that that helps them and helps them serves their constituents. Mm. I know Lorisha can help herself because she's usually the one that's supporting me and is um, works behind the scene. And I see uh, um, Lorisha also working on, you know, answering the question. But for this time, I would like to ask you, Lorisha, um, from your perspective, what does that um, driving community looks to you? Yeah, so to me, driving community is listening and engaging. And sometimes engaging is talking about hard things and, and just being transparent about it. And one thing I've loved about being at Cello is how much we listen to the community and really engage and celebrate. So that scene in our governance, I'm really impressed by the governance. And I know, I don't know if it was the last governance or maybe before that of now, you can nominate people and we can give Cello assets to people that are working in the space. I'm sure someone else can name the governance number to that. Um, but that's something that I love saying. And for me, I like to share the stories and that Cello has these real use cases, stuff that's coming from the community, right? So now that there's over 200,000 wallets for Cello and a lot of it's being driven by impact market and what's happening in Brazil. So for me on when I'm interacting on social media, it's just seeing all of the wins that are happening in the Cello ecosystem and sharing those out on our accounts. Mm. And before moving on to the next uh, um, part of the questions, um, can, one of you, or, or um, one of you, could answer on the uh, the questions proposed from the audience. We've got a new colleague from Lagos, like Nigeria. Is there a local cello project he should know about? I'm so, I'm happy to take that one. Sorry. Oh, oh so you want to. Okay, I'll go. Sorry, it took a minute to um, unmute. Um, we do have a country lead in Nigeria, as well as um, his name is um, Alu, as well as um, somebody who's working directly with consumer growth, Peter, and they're engaged in a number of projects. We have quite a few uh, members in the Cello Alliance for Prosperity that are hailing from Nigeria, Yellow Card included. 
And um, what I would suggest is you can either shoot me an email at anka at clabs.co and I'll make the intro directly to, to Al, you and Peter. Um, or if you want to reach out to LinkedIn, I don't know if we have a, another way to, to reach out to them, but there, there's a lot of exciting uh, projects and partnerships happening in them. Yeah, and would definitely encourage you to look at the cellohub.org uh, that was actually built by one of our early community members um, who uh, attended Prosper. Um, uh, and um, you'll see a full listing of all of the projects that are in our ecosystem. Um, just another interesting project that might be um, might be great to mention here is Patient. Um, they were a group of um, founders that came from Nigeria, and they actually um, were in the earlier stage of their uh, of their founder journey. So they um, participated in Cello Camp, um, and I. Um, They've just been like a great team. They're also great members to kind of interact with. Um, you can find all of them uh, again, like on the cellohub.org. I also just want to add that we have a pretty strong ambassador um, community. We have a program of cello ambassadors around the world. Um, and I know we have quite a strong contingent of them in Nigeria. So if you do connect with Peter, then you can also connect with the local community members um, that are ambassadors there locally. What's ironic is Peter is on a live stream right now with Chris Ani, who is a Nigerian influencer for crypto education. So we're doing a lot in Nigeria. I'm also shameless plug to download Valora. And you can earn some cello rewards there and Mulo Market, which is attached to Valora. So Valora would be a good way as like kind of a starting point too, just to see what cello is doing. Hmm. Next set of questions um, I prepared is around the cello's mission and financial inclusion. Um, before we move on to that, do you have any other project you want to share with uh, the audience who joined today? Vanessa, I think you want to. Yuki, oh. there was one question in the oh, okay. actual chat and from Philip, and I, I thought, I don't know if we, oh, even, okay. if we can invite another person yeah, up here. Yeah, but... unfortunately, there's a limit to six people. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Ah, I see. Yeah. Well, then I'll read this question. Um, yes. Or do you Hi, see uh, how open is the solo community open for other communities, such as the Litecoin tribe? Ooh. Vanessa, would you be able to answer? Yeah, yeah, I wanted to like learn more about oh. the Litecoin tribe, but um, in general, to date, we have the Cello Ambassador program and we're planning to evolve that into a more like guild kind of local communities, ecosystems kind of model where there's incentives um, around that. And I think the question that was just asked is related to that. It's like, like what's going on in Nigeria? Like it's, it's everything like, I think most people around the world are craving in-person connection, my, myself included. and as we start to be able to gather, maybe it's later this year or next year, whenever that may be, um, the concept of local is so powerful, right? Like, I think we we now realize how important it is to just see people and connect. And so whether it's Nigeria or Berlin, or if it's just a global distributed team, um, connecting with other communities is like what makes, this is like where we started this conversation, right? It's the whole purpose of crypto and decentralization and the ways of working. And so absolutely, we're open to working with you. And depending on what you're interested in, we have a variety of funding mechanisms, we have a variety of uh, resources, et cetera. And so it just depends um, how you want to work together, but absolutely. And all of us are um, pretty active on Twitter and the Discord as well. So if you um, want to join the Discord, the a Discord channel and ask questions there, um, and then we can have the follow-up discussion as well. Okay. Um, so I want to talk about the uh, community tenants. Uh, what are the community tenants and how does that impact you building the community? Now I have a Vanessa, maybe we can start with you, Vanessa. Sure. Um, we have four community tenants. We developed them as a way to create a little bit of structure and container around the solo community. So um, it is an open thing. People can make it their own, but 
if you have people gathering without a purpose, then everybody's gonna come with like a different assumption of what that is. And so oftentimes it's helpful just to articulate some infrastructure, right? Just like a little bit of, of substance around the thing. It's like you're baking a cake. If you just threw the liquid in the oven, it would explode versus if you put it in a pan, it kind of has some shape to contain around. And so the tenants are our mm. kind of like pan for the solar community, if we follow that metaphor. Um, so we have four of them and uh, the way Adrian has actually designed Kaneko is to, it's, it's quarterly, so four, and then every Kaneko is a celebration of one of those tenants. And so it's a way we bring that tenant to life through an experience with the community. Um, and so they're kind of the foundation, the like four pillars of the infrastructure. And then it can mean different things to different people. They're not overly prescriptive, but it's really about setting a space for people to gather. I'm happy to go into the tenants. I don't know if somebody else wants to jump in. Yeah, I'm happy to jump in. Um, thank you, Vanessa, for that opening. Um, and so the tenants themselves are innovating on money, designing for all, striving for beauty and humility. And so really the innovating on money and the designing for all both are recognizing that money has an impact on society, right? And so there's ways in which we can think about how to optimize it so that we are um, giving access to uh, financial access to those who need it most, which is really the designing for all piece. So designing for um, people that, you know, where the problems are. So for example, Anka shared, you know, around, around the um, research in Kenya, going to where the problems actually are and helping them achieve their goals. That's really big for us. Um, and so striving for beauty and humility um, I think we can all agree that, that beauty is great. It inspires and, and in some ways is an aspect of prosperity itself. It's a celebration of life. Um, and so striving for beauty, I love that this is part of our tenants because it's bringing that appreciation for life um, forward through everything that we do. And I think you can see this too in the way that we bring a lot of thoughtfulness into the design, into experiences, in fact, um, the first circle that I was a part of at Sella was called the Experience Circle. Um, at Sea Labs, we follow a teal organization as opposed to more of a um, hierarchical structure. So we have circles. And um, it was the first time that I was a part of a team whose focus was not just marketing or social media or um, even design, but we had people across the spectrum of what creates an experience together in an experience circle. And that's really um, goes to show how much that that uh, presentation of striving for beauty and what does that experience feel like uh, when someone's coming and interacting with cell is just so important. And so finally with the humility piece, it's really about recognizing that we're part of a larger structure, right? Um, thinking uh, humbly about yourself and deeply about the world. Um, and that's very important, especially for the mission that we are pursuing, which is about prosperity for all. We have to be considerate of how our piece is impacting and influencing the larger whole. Um, and that is, I just love personally that that's something that we intentionally bring to um, everything that we do um, at Cello or with the Cello community. And so this Kuneko, as um, Vanessa touched upon, we do bring those community tenants to life through each of the uh, of the Kuneko events as a theme. And the theme next week will be innovating on money for social and environmental impact. And so we will be featuring some projects on that, that are building on Cello that, um, that offer that in specific use case stories, including new currencies, uh, working with humanitarian orgs. And so I'm really excited about the lineup for that. Hmm. Um, can I also hear from other um, ladies as well, your opinion or your thoughts on the community tenants? And you know, I'm sure you know when you um, work with a project and building on Celo, and you have experience in sharing um, what brings the community tenants alive and um, that would be interesting story to hear. I really appreciate the striving for beauty tenant because so much of crypto and web three is complicated, right? All of these things are like, what is this that I'm looking at? And so Cello really makes it easy from a UX and UI perspective. And so that's wonderful. And that's something that I love sharing about. And then also for striving for beauty, that means even in, you know, social designs, PDFs, case studies 
for it to be easy to read and to showcase, you know, beautiful photos so that you can see what it, what the technology looks like on the ground. So striving for beauty is something that I really appreciate as a tenant. Mm. Yeah, and I'm, I'm happy to jump in. Um, I think the one that really speaks to me is innovating on money. Um, one of the founders of Cello often talks about, um, about money as a form of technology. And the fact that we haven't really seen many innovations on technology, you know, in the last several hundred years until recently with, you know, with cryptocurrencies um, and and um, and you see, Larissa mentioned earlier, DeFi as an example. I think what's really exciting to me about this particular tenant is like the ability to kind of redefine this, right, um, in a way that kind of really works for our entire community. And so we think about DeFi really and just the the impact that it had on the overall crypto community right um a lot of people were able to kind of benefit from it and so now how do we take some of the core principles of um of DeFi and really kind of translate it into something that is uniquely cello um and this DeFi for good con concept and so really excited about projects that are contributing like a portion of the interest to planting trees um, or, you know, um, to uh, to give like uh, access to micro work um, for unemployed youth in Kenya, as an example. Um, and I think those are just really great examples of, um, of, you know, how we can innovate on money and give access um, to financial tools and systems that otherwise weren't accessible before. Um, I think I'm going to try to build on that because innovating on money is definitely one that I'm, I'm passionate about and um, means a lot to me. But I want to bring it together with um, the humility piece because I think I'll, I'll go back again to um, the fact that it's really communities and users that tell you what they need. And if we go back to how mobile money, which was a huge innovation in terms of um, enabling access to financial products and services in uh, sub-Saharan Africa started. It was not started by a company. It was um, it was people that were actually sharing and using airtime credit as a form of payment, and then the company sort of caught on of what was going on and designed it um, in a way that actually was became a corporate product, right? And so. I think it's really important to keep that in mind, the humility of, of knowing how to listen to your users and also to the ecosystem around you, telling you and showing you what they need um, when it comes to what actually they, you know, what kind of features of money do they want? What works for them? What doesn't? Um, and then this is one of the conversations that I, I have quite, quite frequently with people in um, the digital finance and the more sort of traditional financial inclusion sphere is mobile money improved on some of the features of money um, in a way that had a very meaningful impact in the communities that it did and it still does. And digital digital cryptocurrencies are taking that a few steps further and pushing innovation even further on, on um, the characteristics of money. And that's something that resonates a lot with um, at least the, the people that I talk to in, in our ecosystem. My next question, I think uh, we could spend like hours and days talking about it. Why is it uh, working on financial inclusion project like a cello important to you? You know, I can I can kick this off and hopefully the roofing isn't too loud um, uh, up above. But, um, you know, I mentioned in the intro, my family's from a really small town in Mexico. And I always felt like it was interesting, you know, working in technology and seeing like the access that it enabled um, uh, to um, folks that were in the ecosystem, but how there were just communities that that lacked this access, you know, around the world, not just my families, but others. Um, and so I think like, you know, this financial inclusion is deeply meaningful to me, right? I've seen like firsthand how access to financial tools can like literally change lives. And I think what's been like really, um, you know, inspiring is like when we go out and we meet with local communities, I led a research trip to Oaxaca um, and to Estado Mexico. And it was just really, I think, 
you know, humbling to see, you know, how much people are struggling with just basic financial tools um, and really to be able to kind of see this promise of like what a decentralized um, and an open financial system can provide. Uh, and that was that was something that just I think was 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 really just great about um, about uh, about what we're working on in Cello and I think how deeply meaningful it is to me. Yeah. Happy to um, to go next. Um, it, it seems to me that I've I've spent all, in, almost my entire professional career working um, on institutions who have as a mission shared prosperity. Whether it was um, C Labs building on Cello or the World Bank, who has one of their tenants shared prosperity. Uh, but the other tenant of the World Bank is uh, driving towards zero poverty. And I think what we're seeing uh, and we've been seeing increasingly is it's very hard to make progress in that area when people don't have the financial means to have agency over, over their life. And so to me, being able to empower people was something that I've always passionate about, whether it was professionally or, or otherwise. Um, and I do see financial inclusion as a way to give agency back to those who don't have it and, and empower them to basically have a say in what they want to do, you know, what's the path that they want to take, um, how do they choose to, to pursue the, their unique purpose. Um, and that's why it really means a lot to me. Um, and I'll add there is definitely a gender angle to it. Um, where we do see there's a huge um, gap in women's financial inclusion compared to men. And that's um, another thing that makes me very hopeful about all sorts of DeFi application where, where women get to have access that they, they haven't had before. And most importantly, get to design it. I think why our entire community, including our developers are, are really fundamental in it. To me, it's access. Oh, sorry, Vanessa. Can, you want to, to me, it's access because if you don't have access, it's very hard to participate. So, making sure that people have access to financial inclusion, and for us, that's you know on your mobile device, because so much of crypto was made because people were unable to like have agency to do things. Things were out of their control. So, for people to have control of their own money, even if that means they don't have a bank account because so much of the world doesn't have a bank account or they're underbanked. And so making sure that their people have just power over their own finances and to create opportunities for themselves and for their communities. Vanessa. Yeah, I find the word agency like particularly interesting. When we um, did a project with a World Food Program in Tanzania, we were interviewing refugees and it was really the fact that they didn't have control over their lives. Like to the point even they got uh, the five, like five staple foods every month and that was pretty much the extent of their diet. And so when you have no choice, like yes, they're, you could say their basic needs are being met, they had shelter, they had basic food, they had community in a way, um, but there was no choice in it. Like they couldn't have a career, you couldn't like, th there was just, it was just, it was just very empty. Um, and so to me, like agency and giving people methods by which they can actually take control of their life is like really important. Like one of Sal's values is this concept of unique purpose and that everybody has a purpose that, you know, and, and that could be like a very lofty word and you're like, oh no, I need to figure out my purpose. But it's like, I think it's something that unfolds over time and over time. And it, I'm always kind of revisiting, is this still my purpose? What's going on? But like, if you don't even have the capacity or opportunity to do that, then I, then like, what's the point? Um, and so that's a lot of, for me, what it's about. I think similar, I think Sochi was saying, like um, having been in tech for a while, I like, I got like being at Square, we were in the big tall building. And I remember my, my friend and I would joke, like Rapunzel, let down your hair. And we were just like, have the fancy food and the, you know it's just like this like very bubble life and square does a lot of good for the community as well but it just felt you know you see the systems of you go to this school and then you get in this network and then you get this job and then you get these opportunities and it's like 
that's open to a very small group of people and that like pisses me off <laughs> so i ended up moving into like diversity and inclusion work at square and i'm like i'm gonna like change this shit um and so i've just kind of done different permutations of that since then and the kind of global nature by which like a technology like cello um adds a lot of power to that that's why i was excited about crypto with the concept of like equity on a large scale where people can kind of create and have agency but then also potentially financially benefit because like money is power and power isn't necessarily bad and more people that have money that's distributed and we can grow the pie etc like the more that people can prosper um and so i think crypto offers a lot of those things and it'll be the test over the next like five or ten years how that manifests I really love that share, Vanessa, and it just brings up um, a lot for me too that I resonate with that ultimately, yeah, money is life because um, it's, for me, I'm just super passionate about life and to kind of squeeze the juice as much out of life as possible, but it's actually a privilege to do so because you can only do that to the degree to which you have access and resources. Um, your container, to go back to the, the term that Vanessa used earlier, is gonna determine the degree to which you can follow your purpose. So if you don't have a structure that's supporting you, that gives you access, there's really so far, only so far that you can go in expressing yourself and getting to know who you are and relationships and community, there's only, there ends up being a cap on what you can experience in life. And so um, I, re I relate as well. I worked at Google for several years. And um, of course, there's so much great that comes out of Google. Um, but it was also that kind of bubble world of, of privilege. And I felt like there was an opportunity to actually be more intentional of how we use technology for inclusion and just impact on society at large. Um, I still remember my first economics class, my freshman year of college, uh, with the supply and demand curve, you know, very basic of how you have the, the, um, the, the vendors that are selling their wares, and then you have the consumers that are purchasing, and somehow magically a price happens. And my mind was blown because I was like, whoa, we're all just participating in this world doing our daily thing, not realizing how we're impacting one another as a part of this larger system. And so I think being able to get under the hood of that to kind of see what those mechanisms actually are to create more and better, dare I say, experiences for more people, I think is super powerful. And so that's really why um, I'm so passionate about this particular mission and, and I'm, I'm a part of the Cello community. Yeah, to me, I think financial inclusion is all about um, recognizing one's privilege and then sharing the privilege and making that even playing field almost. Because everyone has the same privilege of enjoying the life um, if it affords them and pursuing their own life's purpose. But in order to do that, um, the conditions of a prosperity for themselves also has to exist. And having that privilege, um, not oftentimes like, you know, yeah, it's, it's very different um, to me. I, th I think it's very personal. And I recognize the type of privilege I, I have. Um, and so it was also important to me to work on a project like Cello. Um, yeah. Thank you, everyone, for sharing. We lost Anka. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, you know, um, one thing that I wanted just to kind of touch on, and I know that we've been talking a lot about, um, you know, uh, financial inclusion and the community, but I think one thing that um, I think it's important also to kind of mention is just the this concept of building blocks and financial building blocks on Zello, um, especially as it relates to the ecosystem. I think in order for us to kind of achieve the full potential of this mission and the full potential of financial inclusion, it's gonna be really important that we have some of these foundational building blocks, right? Um, and we've seen this with projects like um, coming into the Cello ecosystem, like the graph, right? That now enables um, Web2 developers to access tools that they haven't been uh, before. 
also with the advent of like some of the AMMs and DEXs that we're seeing like with Moolah Market and with Ubiswap, I think this is, these are really kind of core aspects. Um, and, you know, I guess I would just like invite others to kind of help us, you know, create some of these financial building blocks. Um, and uh, that would be, I guess, uh, my call to action to the greater community is, um, you know, would really love to engage more with you on this and to kind of think about like what's needed so that we can really achieve the full potential of, um, of this mission. Any other things to add? Um, we have a question from the audience and any group here uh, in Brazil, I guess maybe asking for, maybe Juba is asking for a community or the alliance existing in Brazil. I think we have the right person, Sochi. <laughs> yes, we do. We have, um, and actually Philip on the call um, is working on a project, um, uh, Hey Mate, um, that, that's also focused on Brazil. We've quite an extensive Brazil ecosystem uh, projects like Impact Market are focused there. Um, uh, a community presence that we're driving. Um, it's really exciting just to kind of see the breadth of university students that are working on a project like Love Crypto that um, basically is like an earning and reward platform to projects like Impact Market that are focused on like um, favelas and how do we um, give UBI um, universal basic income to um, to the community. Um, and uh, gosh, there's so many that I could mention here that I get excited about, but would encourage you um, to check out the Discord community um, um, as uh, Chris posted, um, and then also there is um, there's just a, a wonderful group um, that's available that that we're happy to kind of put you in, in touch with as well. Yeah. I have a couple of um, quick fill the blank type of questions, and so maybe we can move on to that unless. Um, Folks want to share last stats? There seems to be a common questions around Celo and X. <laughs> um, so uh, pointing to a need for that. So I just want to acknowledge that. OK. All right, few of the blank questions. When I think about Koneko, the song I hear in my head is? Levitating by Dua Lipa. What? <laughs> Adriana, what was the song from not the Jer like the one two ago? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. That was the one so I was hilarious. thinking of. <laughs> I need to find the artist though. I'll find it and share yes. it in the chat. Yes, please. Oh, yeah. I want to listen to it again. For context, we usually open Kuneko with a song from the host country, and this was um, from South Africa, and it was a really great dance tune and by Master KG. Yeah, so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna share this. In the chat. That was the first time I actually um, heard that song, and I must have listened to it so many times. And then I watched the YouTube, and then there's like a people group of people doing the dance. Oh, that was amazing. Any other songs? No, that's it? That's the song? <laughs> it's giving me an idea though, that maybe yeah. we do like a collective community Koneko playlist of mm. like, submit your songs. We can't play them on YouTube, but you can play them before Koneko, after, it could be fun. We could have like a just like a public playlist mm. kind of thing. I don't know if it's on. Um, Absolutely, Spotify, like maybe something more open. But just a note too that um, because of copyright issues, we're actually having some challenges identifying music for this next oh. one. So, does anyone out there that has musical recommendations for Kenya, Philippines, Korea, or Brazil? Like, would love to feature some local artists and play their yeah, music. I would love to have like a BTS team um, <laughs> agree to uh, play their song at Dynamite. That'd be amazing. Yeah. Yes, I welcome all leads on this. So 
Yeah. Yeah. Does having a DJ make a difference? Um, I don't know. DJ? No I think a DJ would be hmm. fine, I think, because I think, yeah. I mean, I'm always down for live music. Why do you do so great? Hmm. Yeah, the copyright is the issue. Oh, you've gotten copyrighted as a DJ? Is that what you're saying, Chris? Yeah. Okay. I see. So yeah, ideally having access to a file would be great. Next question. During the next week's Kuneko, I'll be doing that, that, that. I'll be liking all of your tweets. So tweet hashtag Kaneko and I'll like I'll like them. I love seeing what the community loves. I know you're like a social media goddess. <laughs> I'll be sitting back with tea, sending a lot of love and hoping that it all unfolds well <laughs> and just checking for any issues. Um, and yeah, shout out to a Calico Kitten Cat who's going to be sharing an intro on how to build on Cello on Figment Learn. So thank you, Chris, for participating. Um, and Judy is also going to be participating. I want to just plug MCing. And so <laughs> just great. That's, I mean, again, like it's just a great way to bring so many. People I'm only from. doing it because you asked me. <laughs> you know what? That, that works for me, Judy. <laughs> Um, Only if you wear your tie, Judy. That's right. Are you I'm gonna go. <laughs> Sochi and Vanessa, what are you going to be doing? I'm probably going to be snacking mm -hmm. and having some tea and, and enjoying the show. <laughs> That's right. You're going to come to my show, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be like clapping, maybe clapping. Actually, I'll probably be dancing during the music part right. because I love dancing. Dynamite. <laughs> Hopefully we get dynamite. <laughs> BTS. Do we have any BTS army? Hook us up. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I was planning on cheering from the sidelines, but it sounds like I may be speaking about funding opportunities on Zillow. So um, yes, so stay tuned. <laughs> Next question. I am most excited about the Cello community to get introduced to da, 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 next week at the Kuneko event. It could be a project or event um, that you are most excited about uh, sharing with the Cello community. What would that be? I'm excited about uh, Charles and Sepp talking to so Charles Eisenstein uh, he's a philosopher, his book, Sacred Economics, uh, informed a lot of like the thinking behind Cello originally. And so Seth, our co-founder, and Charles are going to have a conversation. And this is something we've been trying to schedule for about three years. So I'm um, <laughs> excited uh, for the community to kind of just get more about the like philosophy and like foundations. Expecting a lot of inspirational quotes from that session. I'm also really excited about the Make It Mobile Hackathon Demo Day. The um, So I know that just wrapped up yesterday, but there were 67 projects, and I think we're going to do kind of the top. So you can probably speak to how many will be a demo day. But just from looking at Twitter, I'd like there's a really cool one with an ATM machine and just like what people are like building as far as um, like fundraising. I know there was a fundraising project in Mexico. So I cannot wait to watch some of these demo videos. Yay, Anka, you're back <laughs> just in time to answer the question. Did you hear the question? Anka? Oh, no. Looks like she's muted. Oh, no. Um, yeah, I, there's so many different projects. Um, it's hard to kind of choose choose one um, just to kind of throw out something different. Um, I think for the first time, we're going to really highlight um, this ecology of currencies on Zillow. And so excited to hear um, the speakers talk about just like new ways that, again, like this concept of like, um, you know, innovating on money. And so we're going to hear projects that are looking at, um, you know, tokenizing rainforest, looking at the new Cello Euro launch, 
um, looking at a mutual credit solution that basically enables like a sharing economy. Um, uh, and then looking at a group, um, also one of the Celo Camp alums called Duniape that is, um, that is focused on a community currency in Franco Africa that I'm really excited about. Um, and so, yeah, I, there's going to be a lot happening over the next, uh, over those two days next week and just really excited for everybody to begin to, to get a peek for what's been happening at the Celo, in the Celo ecosystem. Mm. That's a great sneak preview of what what's gonna happen in Kneko. My last question, it has nothing to do with Kneko or the cell detector. I'd like to know what you're going to be doing or traveling um, when the summertime comes, provided that things are back to normal. I don't have any travel plans at this point, um, but my family is all back in Massachusetts. I grew up on Cape Cod and I have been dreaming about spending some summer time on the Cape and getting back into the ocean, which is where I'm most comfortable. So uh, that would be, uh, yeah, that's something I'm thinking about right now. Any dream traveling location? I'm taking the notes. When are you going to be um, away? I'm. Have I'm. <laughs> yeah. I'm. Um, I'm currently sheltering in place in Costa Rica, um, and we've not been able to kind of see the country um, with my family down here, and so. I'm looking forward to actually being able to like see the beautiful countryside here and exploring that. Um, um, but yeah, that's my my uh, my dream this summer to be able to like explore the countryside. Yeah. I can't wait to go back to New York City. I feel like it's like my favorite city and there's so much life and energy. So doing that and then I get to, um, I have some family that is Hopi. And so I'll be going to Arizona and spending some time with them. I, well, I was supposed to get married last year and we moved to this year. Or are they gonna cancel it or move it to next year? Uh, so it was in Italy. So I think we're still gonna go just so that with ourselves in the fall. Mm -hmm. So we're planning that trip. For me, it's a Croatia. <laughs> mm. Yes, I love Croatia. Croatia. I would love to go to Croatia. Um, but I really want to thank every one of you. Um, you have been very important folks in my life um, at Silla and also working on Cello. So, yeah, thank you all for joining. And I really appreciate that all the support and the inspiration you had been to me. Um, keep rocking on. <laughs> you folks are my box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We love you, Judy. Yes. Thank you, Hello. Judy. For yeah, for Judy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you all. And then thank you, audience, for joining today. I had a great fun. This was a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.